In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this web design using Figma. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So to begin, I'm opening up an empty Figma project. In this video, I'm going to show you the full design tutorial from beginning to end. And in my next video, I'm going to show you how to create this design using HTML and CSS. So when I begin a project, I usually like to have a color palette defined off to the side. In this color palette, I have a neutral column and then a primary color column. For this primary color, I have the main bright accent and then I have a different state of it in case I need it. So I usually like to define the colors first so I have a general sense of which colors I want to use throughout the UI to be a bit more consistent. To get started, I already added a desktop frame to the page. First, I'm going to lay out the structure of the page, and then I'm going to fill it in with realistic content. So to begin, I'm going to click the R key for rectangle, which then changes my cursor. And I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle on the page. This will represent the navigation bar. Then beneath that, I'm going to have some text. So I'm going to hit the T key, and then I'm going to click on the page. And then I will add the copy for the H1 element, and for this website, I'll set it to get started. So I want this page to include content to show users how they could get started within this application. So that is why the H1 element is set to get started at the top. Then I'm going to create three boxes and each box will represent a step in the process. So for right now, I'm just going to block it off by having a gray rectangle. This is essentially the wireframe for the website, and now I'm going to go back in and actually add content and styling so it looks a bit better. At the top here, I will have a navigation bar. So first, I'm going to set the fill of this to white. And then I want to add a shadow to the design so it pops a little bit more from the background. I'm going to go down to Effects, and then I'm going to add a shadow property. For this shadow property, I just increased the blur and had a little bit of a Y index. Next, for this navigation, I know I want the logo to be on the left, and then I want different links of content to be on the right side. So I'm going to make a logo and place it on the left area of the screen. Then on the right side, I'm going to want to apply links that the user can access. So first, I'm going to include a get started link because that is the page that the user is on. Then I'm going to include an about section and a contact section. Now the font here looks too large for the navigation bar, so I'm actually going to take all of these elements and reduce their font size. As you can see right here, it's set to 32, so instead I'm going to switch it to 16. That looks a little too small, so instead I will switch it to 24. That looks quite a bit better. I'm going to want the logo to stand out a little bit from the other element, so I'm going to take this logo and I'm going to apply this other color that I already defined. Then I'm just going to take these elements and push it over a little bit. Next, since we actually are on the Get Started page, I actually want this link to have a little bit of an accent so the user knows which page that they're actually on. So I'm going to add a little accent so the user knows that they are actually on the Get Started page. And again, I'm going to reference a color that I already defined. Next, I'm going to work on the page content. So the H1 element on this page looks a little small. It looks a little too close to the actual navigation size. So instead, I'm going to modify this. So instead of it being 32, I might set it to 48 to bump it up quite a bit. And I place it in the center of the screen. Next, I'm going to work on each card design. So I'm going to create a card design and then turn that design into a component so that I can easily reuse it throughout my design system. So I'm going to do a very similar thing that I did with the navigation bar. I'm going to take this rectangle 
and change the fill to white. And then I'm going to apply the same shadow effect. So I'm going down to effects and then adding that shadow style. And then for each one of these cards, I'm going to want to add a number to the top that represents which number in the sequence the step is. I want it to have a header and then I want to include a description so the user knows what to do. So first I'm going to start by clicking the O key to make a circle, O meaning oval. And I'm just going to set this to 100 by 100 pixels and we can see how that looks. And I'm going to place that in the center of this container. Then I'm going to change the fill of the circle to be that primary color. Then I'm going to include a header tag. So again, I click T for the text and then I'll just write header for now. And then beneath that, I'm just going to copy and paste it and then include a description. Now, both of these elements have a text justify set to left, but I actually want to make it in the center. So I'm going to grab the header and the description and set it to center. And then I'm actually going to change the position of the elements to be center aligned as well. And then place it in the center of the container. Now everything is set to 48 pixels, which is a bit too loud for the page. Plus I want the styling to be reserved for the H1 element. So I'm going to modify this to be more appropriate for an H2 element. So instead of it being 48, I'm going to switch it to 32. And then for the description, I want that to behave like a body copy. So instead I'm going to switch it to 16. I'm also going to modify the weight of this. So I don't want it to be black. I want it to be regular. Now for this number counter, I have to actually include a number here. So I'm adding the T for text. I'm putting in a number and then I'm going to place that in my circle. Now this looks a bit too small. So here I'm going to modify this to, let's say 64. Let's see how that looks. And then I'm going to bump up the weight to be bold. Okay, so now we have a number indicator, a header, and then a description. So I'm going to take these elements and just organize them quite a bit. So I'm taking that number and that circle putting it in a group by holding Command G, and then it adds a group here in my layer panel. And then when I click Command R, I can rename it. So I'm going to call it counter. Then the header I can leave as header and the description I'll leave as description. But I'm going to take all these elements and place it in a group called container. So now I have this group with all these elements and I'm going to make it into a component. So up here, I'm going to create component and if you're new to Figma, I have a whole tutorial that shows you how to create components. So I'll link that video in the description below. So here when I click create component, now the style of the layer has changed. So it has become a component. And I can get rid of these wireframes that we created. And I'm going to take each one and copy and paste it. So these two are now instances of that master component. So if I were to go in here and move this header, then it would move on all the other elements as well. That's because these two components are actually referencing this master component. So now I'm going to go in here and actually place realistic content. So the first step will be to pick a template. And then I will include instruction beneath that. Now we obviously don't want the text to overflow out of the container. So I'm going to restrict the size of the element. Now, as you can see, all the other text has been updated to match that master component. So now I'm going to modify the text for each instance. So first I'm going to tap on the counter and instead of it saying one, I'm going to modify it to two. Then I'm going to modify each header. So now I've updated the copy for all of the components, but it retains the initial styling of the master component. Now this container looks a little bit big for the copy. So I'm actually going to go into this rectangle and reduce the size of it. You can see that once I do, the other ones are modified as well. And I want to add a little bit of a curve radius here. So it's not just a sharp edge. So I'm going to tap into this container and then increase the corner radius. 
Next, these cards look a little too close to that header, so I'm going to increase the distance to have a little bit more breathing room. And overall, this page still looks a little bland, so I'm going to take this entire frame and then add a background color to it. So I selected the frame of desktop and I'm going to fill. I'm going to click on that fill and then set it to a slight gray. That way each of the cards pop out a little bit more. So there you go. That's how I designed this get started page using Figma. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to develop these cards using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.